This time on Pedalbox Fleet with the T-Bird, we are not doing Fleet with the T-Bird, unfortunately. This did not go quite as well as planned, and now we have to order some new parts. So we're gonna bring you a little bit more work on the kit car while we wait on some international shipping. Yes, this episode we plan to bring you the front end teardown of the Thunderbird, which we clearly managed, but unfortunately once we got under the metalwork, it all went a bit wrong. Yeah, everything from there on went a little bit wonky, so we discovered that the battery tray in here was really more like 25% of a battery tray. Yeah, a bit more of a battery sieve. Yep, so we had to make a whole new panel and fit that in, and there's also a big old bunch of mess right by Adrian over on the wheel arch over that side, which we need to fix up. This is horrible, and we need to fix this for my conscience and the legacy of us having touched this car. However, the other part we wanted to do was overhaul the brakes, and I have all the parts for that. Unfortunately, you kind of jinxed us by saying it would be a nice, easy job. And all of the brake pipes were rusted, which meant they tore when we took them off. We didn't have to take them off. And then the pistons got stuck in the calipers. So we kind of screwed ourselves massively, and now we have to wait for new brake pipes to go around the calipers and a bunch of other little bits and pieces to get this done. So this will hopefully be coming in episode 65, Watch that not work out that way. Oh no. So instead we're going to bring you some more work on the kit car because we have been doing a lot of work on that despite not putting out many episodes. So take a look at that now as well as Chris who finally returned taking his first look around the car after I'd put six months of work into it. So I'm back from Wales to do what I'm best at or at least what I'm least bad at and I'm going to do a bit more welding. I've got the uh, I guess almost the symbolic honour of putting in the last piece of the outer framework that's going to support the rear bodywork here. So it's a little metal support. It's going to fit in, weld onto, the, oop, weld onto the chassis and support around here and probably hold the rear lights and stuff in place. It's not going to be part of the removable piece with the rear bumper. This is going to be fixed on the body. So I'm going to get that welded in and we can move on to something else. So we've got the windscreen surround back in. You remember I made this before I put these A-pillars in to make sure that it would fit properly. Now to mount this in place, we're gonna to have to have the top of it slightly proud to create the roof line so the bodywork doesn't dip down or crash into the front of this crossbar in here. And the bottom of it is gonna sit just proud by about half an inch so that we can put a plate in which will hold from the A-pillar into the side of here quite easily without having to put something really, really thin down and try and weld it, because that'll just be impossible. That'll also give a little bit more rake to the windscreen, and from there we can start filling out the rest of the bodywork down the front of the car, which is gonna be awesome. So we need to get some magnets, put this in place, generally fiddle it around and make sure that it's symmetrical, and then start making some pieces to infill from the side of here to the frame itself. Well, fast forward a couple hours and we've now got the windscreen installed. That was rattlier than I expected. Uh, it's located pretty well now. We've got it fairly well symmetrical and everything. We've looked at the car from a few different angles and we're quite happy with how it fits. So A+. plus. It was a bit more of a battle than we really hoped though. Um, after the frame snapped in a couple of places, we've lost a few of our welds. We had to get pretty inventive with clamps and magnets and other pieces of metal stock as supports and all sorts of stuff to get it lined up but it's now tacked in, so all we gotta do now is slowly but surely over time, stitch in all the way along the two edges of the piece of flat bar that we have as an interface between the surround and the frame. Now, we're probably gonna do the same as we did on the pedal box, where it's gonna be little stitches of weld, and we'll just fill it in over time, because I figure otherwise the warping is gonna be horrible, and this could end up maybe no longer fitting the screen well, or maybe even cracking the glass if it's installed, so nice and slow. It's been a long four months for Adrian here working on his own and I gotta say he's been keeping himself pretty busy. I think this is more work added to the car in four months than in any other four months that we've been working on it which doesn't say a lot for how useful I am to the project but there we go. Now the amount of car that he's added to the car is pretty impressive and we can't really get through all of it in one shot with 
you know, good presentation. So I'm going to go through piece by piece. We're going to start off with the cage here, and then we're going to go from the front of the car progressively to the back, which is probably a good way to go, because I'm pretty sure you can agree with me. The cage is probably about the biggest, coolest part of all of this work. It's a proper full six-point cage. It goes all the way. We've got A pillars running all the way down into the bottom corners with a windscreen surrounding now, supporting an actual glass windscreen, albeit it's broken, but we'll ignore that. We've got a proper rear roll tube that covers all the way over the seats and over where we expect our heads and helmets to go. We've got rear stays that support the rear suspension and hopefully should keep the car rigid and stop the rear end from kind of doing this over bumps and bending all over the place and we've got some nice big diagonal cross bracing in the back that should stop it twisting this is a genuinely amazing piece of work for one person to have done and as far as i know he had a lot of help off of a place bending the metal tubes up and everything that would be uh, colin down at ignition motorsports but still the installation and fitment of it as far as i know was all aid so round of applause to him now the front of the car hasn't changed quite as much as the middle with the cage and everything, but it has nonetheless gotten a lot longer and a lot wider. There's a fair bit more metal on here than there was last time I saw. So we've now got the outline of some actual wheel arches. We're expecting our tubs to fit somewhere in here. Uh, this is probably going to be part of our bonnet line, so we're going to have a bonnet that vaguely sort of comes in, drops down into the middle and has some vents in there. And also the front end's been extended to fit our headlights because it turns out they don't quite get close enough back to the so they were going to interfere with the wheels we've had to punch all that out which is a fair bit of fabrication and i remain surprised at how much work has gone into all of this framework to give the car a bit of shape which hopefully is going to give us a lot easier time when it comes to start designing bodywork and things because we actually have kind of a silhouette here that we can work with now a year ago when we put this crash bar on i don't think we really expected the car to get as wide as it is and now that we've expanded it out as much as we have we've realized it's um it's a little bit inadequate so we need to do some work here. We're either going to extend this out by modifying it with some more aluminium that we're going to have to get tigged on or something, or we're just going to build our own a bit like we did on the rear end. Um, now, the supports that hold it up, I thought at first looked way too beefy because the reality is this is not like, this isn't a heavy piece of material, it's aluminium. And these are some pretty hefty chunks of box section. But what we're actually planning to do is hang a big old splitter off the front of this thing. It's going to be coming out a good way down here. Now, the frontmost support that we have anywhere else is a good, like, foot and a half or so back into the cup excuse me, back into the car. So we're gonna to have to take all of the downforce is gonna be hanging effectively down on these mounts, which is why they've gotta be as beefy as they are. Now the sides of this car are pretty weird compared to any other Lotus 7 clone you're likely to see. One of the interesting decisions we made quite early on was we weren't gonna be open wheel and have this little tub in the middle. We were actually gonna have a fully enclosed body, which means we've got this really nice body line, or we hope it's a really nice body line, running the whole way along the car. So this top line here gives us basically most of our profile all the way into the rear haunch. Underneath, we've got the beginnings of a vent that's going to be starting off just as the rear arch tapers down here. And this entire re uh, region under here is going to be the intake throat for our intercoolers on both sides of the car. So hopefully with that, we'll keep the charge nice and cool with loads of supply of nice cold ambient air. And if we're clever, we can hopefully engineer in a nice sort of stepping point in the middle here so that we can actually climb into the car. This right here, I think, is the money shot because these rear haunches are probably my favorite part of the whole car design so far. Now on the bottom, we've got these intercooler ducts I described earlier, but then straight off the back of that, we're gonna have a nice big rear haunch that comes all the way up over onto a deck at the back of the car that we're gonna mount our wing and everything else off of. And this, I think, is a really, really nice profile. We've got our wheel arch, um, it, like in our inner arch support structure here that we're gonna bolt all of our inner arch structure to, which hopefully will keep too much mud from getting everywhere else in the car. Um, and I think, as far as I can tell from comparing it to stuff like the Esprit S4 and some other supercars, we've got quite a nice amount of shoulder above the arch here, so I think we're onto, onto a winner. I'm kind of impressed at the amount of metal that's going on here, like we've got a lot of individual little bent pieces of this 10mm tube to make up all of this shape, which, similar to the front end, it's given us a really nice basis to know where the bodywork's going to go and what the car's going to look like. Even though I don't have a very good mind's eye, I can't picture it with panels on, I can at least look at the silhouette and think, yeah, this is awesome. This is going to be great. Now, hopefully from this angle, you can see part of why I'm so excited about this thing. The width and flatness of this car is going to be something else. I was really, really worried when I got the first photos back of the roll hoop when it went on because I felt like it made the car look really tall compared to how wide it was. I thought it looked like it was going to fall over all the time. But thankfully, now that Adrian's built these rear arch covers and everything, this has got a proper big fat supercar look to it, especially when we've got our 10J wheels and massive great big meaty tires underneath. 
So part of the plan here is because the exhaust is sat relatively high up in the body, we can put a massive great big diffuser underneath, which granted, we're not 100% sure we can get the aerodynamics right on, but hopefully we can learn that in time to build it. And then up on the top, we're gonna have a great big wing, pretty much the whole width of the car mounted on top of the deck. So hopefully between the wing and the diffuser, we'll get a load of downforce on this thing, which will probably help deal with our uh, slight weight distribution issue. Well, I hope you're all as excited about this as I am. I know I'm really looking forward to getting this done. And if you are too, you can help us out a bit by buying some of our merch at shop.pedalbox.show. If you want to support us more directly and don't want to get a t-shirt out of it, you can always back us on Patreon as well. Uh, our Patreon supporters have done a lot of help for us lately. The latest contribution is they bought us all of the exhaust parts that we're going to need to tie our turbo onto our back box. So that's a really major win for us. That was actually pretty pricey stuff. If you want to join them in helping us out, just head to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow and back us as much as you fancy. Every dollar a month helps.